Is that a crotch rocket? No. Is that a fast bike? Not really. It looks fast. Well, it is full fairing, sure, but this fills a different market segment How for- How comes it's not fast if it looks fast? Aerodynamics helps with rider fatigue, fuel economy, weather protection, in addition to speed, oh, and- Oh, so you lied. It is fast. I suppose it accelerates faster than most cars. Let me ask you a question then. How fast does it go? Well, let's see. Uh, with the stock gearing, rear sprockets, and the bass tune, I suppose the top speed is somewhere between 130 and 135 miles an oh, hour. Oh, that's fast. Most family cars can Be go. Be careful. Crotch rockets are dangerous. I will. No car today. Doesn't anybody like GSX anymore? Can't be sure if anybody liked them before But it helps to know it's from 2008 This is a 2008 Suzuki GSX 650F. All this is, is a Bandit 650 cosplaying as a Jixxer 650. This isn't a Jixxer. Uh, this is a gentleman's sport bike. And this was a sales flop. I love it. A sport bike with full handlebars, not clip-ons. An upright seating position, but rear set foot pegs, but not aggressively rear set. A 12,500 RPM redline, but a quiet exhaust. The GSX 650F, which I will refer to now as just the 650F, had one of the largest mufflers fitted to any motorcycle. I need to shave my ass again. Wiping feels like drying a rhododendron. Like the Honda Goldwing, most engine noise you hear while riding is injector and valve train whine. Engine compression is 11 and a half to 1, but ooh, here's the best part. The factory tune is for 87 octane, and you still get 85 horsepower crank. And I'm averaging 50 to 53 miles per gallon. You get a basic fuel gauge, I never had one of these before, and hazard lights, I never had these things before either, and flash to pass, high beam trigger, never had one of these before, and a programmable shift light, and fuel injection, water cooling, six speeds, four valves per pot, double cams, and twin discs. But... No oil dipstick, and an oil filter that blorps all over the headers when you take it off. In the UK, Australia, and New Zealand, the 650F sold well because of its cheap gas tune, ease of restriction for L-bikes, and good fuel economy satisfying multiple market segments. But when Suzuki brought the 650F to the United States to replace the aging carbureted Katana, the 650F sold poorly for the same reasons. Most Americans don't like all-rounder bikes. If a Yank wants a sport bike, they'll buy a hunchbacked, ass-up, pent-up Yamaha R6 or R1, Jixxer 1000, BMW S1000 RR, or Honda CBR. And if a Yank wants a cruiser, they'll buy a Harley with hard bags or a sleek Goldwing. Either way, they have their feet up listening to Classic Rock 99.9 The Hawk all the way from Fogelsville to the Apple Store in the Lehigh Valley Mall. Suzuki marketed the 650F as a sport touring motorcycle, but didn't offer, a, they didn't offer hard bags for it. So there was no way to tour with your stuff. That's something Yamaha does with their FJR series. KTM with the Super Duke GT has hard bags. The Kawasaki versus a 1000 LT has hard bag bags. You get what I'm saying? All dedicated real sport touring motorcycles have everything you need to put all your stuff in and go on a road trip. And then when you get to wherever you are, you take your hard bags off, you put them in your tent, you put them in your hotel room, and then you go out and sport ride wherever you're going, come back to the hotel, put all the stuff back on the bike, and then cruise on the highway to your next destination. Suzuki squeezed out the 650F with little factory accessories to fill the role it made for the bike. And also, it's not smooth in its power delivery either. The very simple ECU idle circuit doesn't transition easy to off-idle fueling. It's an on-off switch, really. It's...
It's annoying. You know, it feels like a carbureted bike with an aggressively tapered needle jet. And there's no way to adjust the fueling either, it's set. And back to the luggage problem. Aftermarket soft bags don't hang well either off this bike, because look at how the tail is formed. The bowed out plastic fairings along and underneath the seat don't let factory soft bags just hang flat. There are some very expensive Givi, like full pannier setups for the 650F, but now we're pushing like another G to outfit this bike with the hard bags it should have had from the factory and used on Craigslist, these bikes are like four grand. So why do I like it so much? Why did I buy one? Because I want the feel and some of the speed of sport bikes without wrist pain, back pain, and the guilt associated with being that guy. The guy on the sport bike disturbing pedestrians with loud exhausts and having to pay crotch rocket insurance prices. By classifying this mild sport bike as a sport tour, insurance companies don't hammer you with organ donor prices. And because of the upright bars and the big seat, you can ride long distances without fatigue. And I'm that guy. I'm the guy who squares off rear tires on sport bikes. Yeah, you hate me. The 650F only lasted in the United States from 2008 to 2012. Four years, and then it was gone. While the cheaper to produce Suzuki Bandit, off which the 650F was based, continues in production to this day. The 650F exists to delight only one market segment. Me! Close your door and only whisper. Find your tits so you look like a man, <laughs> and then just get a strap on. <laughs> Put on the Indigo Girls and tell me I'm what's wrong with this country. I need it. I'll buy you breakfast. I don't have time to talk right now. 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 Put on this 311 t-shirt and let me call you Jeff. Let's cuddle while listening to the shipping forecast. I'll 69 a cardboard cutout of you while you pick up your mom from the hospital. I can fit my dick inside my scrotum and make the whole thing look like an avocado. Monkey nuts. Check out this GSX that I'm riding. Some call it cheaping out. I got in a Bitcoin through Tony Robbins. The man was in shallow how. The man was in shallow how.